All right, welcome to episode 57 of Adventures in Between. Today I am reliving some childhood memories looking at The Transformers, the movie from 1986. Uh, I've got 35 seconds that I chose here to look at. Lots of great stuff. Ending with Unicron there. Let's start with Unicron, this massive planet showing off the scale of this film, the ambition of it overall. Yes, it was just there to sell toys, but the results go so far beyond that. So animation-wise here, we've really only got the one image panning and then these two horns animating out. And it's just, it's relatively simple, but the amount of detail is what just <laughs> causes such an impact. Now here, again, this is uh, all the debris being pulled up here. This is Unicron devouring a planet. So vehicles, robots, so much detail, so much motion here. So much more ambitious than uh, you know, the TV show was in the first two seasons. Obviously not trying to animate every single piece of debris. And we start out with the small pieces, then we go into these big chunks. Everything's going up and left because Unicron is devouring everything. Uh, <laughs> honestly, animating big shapes is a lot less work than keeping track of all the small shapes. But with the small shapes, you're not animating every single one. Full buildings, robots being pulled up. You're, you're animating the masses of the shapes. You've got a mass here, a mass there. And as long as you see the mass moving up, it's all good. This shot here, I love this shot. It's such a short shot in the film, but let's look at the elements here. So we've got foreground elements. We have all these leaves and bits of grass animating towards us. We have the mid-grown element here with Hot Rod basically staying in place, just panning to the right. Then we have the animating background, mid-ground. And it's animating on twos. It's only a eight drawing or eight frames, four drawing cycle. And then we have the single BG panning up in the background. So these four layers make it all work. And here, these, like I say, it's just four drawings, but it doesn't feel repetitive. And here, let's play through it again. Just watch the cycling going on. Look how the animation or the background is panning up on ones while the foreground and midground elements are going on twos. It's just beautiful and it doesn't feel repetitive despite the fact there's only four drawings being repeated there. Wonderful stuff. Uh, here, again, with the scale, I've made a bunch of notes here. You see the big shapes surrounded by the little shape, you silhouettes, everything. Now, animation is on twos here. Hot Rod, look how tiny he is up top there. He's a big robot, but Everything is, the camera shakes on ones, and that makes it feel more immediate as well. Now, as Hot Rod's going to jump off here, we're going to get some cheating going on. He's jumping off. We're going to start panning with Hot Rod. We're going to pan Hot Rod. We're going to pan the building that's falling off, the, the mountainside that's sliding off here. Everything's going to pan while the background is moving on ones away from us. Everything is animated on twos. Uh, it's just all cheating, but it works well. Uh, so here we've got uh, Devastator versus Sludge. Sludge is coming in here. They drew some ground shadows to help them look more grounded. Feet are sliding, but you know, it's, it's forgivable. Now here you got Devastator coming down. Look what happens with Sludge's eyes here. I had to go back and rewind this when I first reviewed this again. I did not remember this. This is the most cartoony moment, moment in the entire film. This film is all about robots. It's all about structure. To have the eyes popping out of the head and becoming all cartoony, I, I think somebody just said, ah, let's put in one little bit there. Uh, here we got, uh, of course, Optimus versus Megatron. Optimus, big punch. Megatron coming through, following through on the head. Optimus and Megatron are often uh, moving on opposite, op opposing frames. I think that's intentional, just to keep everything moving. So here comes Optimus now. Megatron's leg is coming in on screen right there. He's fast, but Optimus is faster. Boom! There goes uh, Optimus off the top. There goes Megatron. Look at the, the fire he's leaving behind there. And he's following through, keeping alive. These, this is one thing that I, I really like this shot because it shows how agile these, you know, huge 30 foot tall robots are. Now look at Megatron putting his hands back there. He's doing it. He's doing the ninja flip. Boom. Double foot kick to Prime's midsection there. Impact on the ground. Just one frame. Following through with Prime off screen. 
and there's Megatron in control. Now, of course, the death of Starscream couldn't leave that out. It's just, I remember 16-year-old me watching this in theater. I was like, are they actually doing that? And of course, it was all to sell toys, kill off a bunch of the main characters. But look at this. Even Starscream fades to gray. The only other character that happened with was Optimus Prime, saying, wow, this character's death means a lot. People lost their minds when this happened. So animation-wise, obviously, we've got the shoulder, we've got the face starting to crumble, cracks starting to form in the rest of the body here in the chest. We have the purple smoke, because it's Galvatron's gun that did the damage here, of course. Why not make it purple? Now the arm is still intact, so we're going to start panning down, and the gravity of everything falling is what's uh, motivating that pan. Now, of course, everything is crumbling as it's being revealed here. So we pan down to the waist. The waist is crumbling. We pan down to the legs. The legs are crumbling. That's all very convenient. If you saw this from a wide shot, it wouldn't be as effective because we're showing it, we're exposing it, we're saying, hey, basically the camera is determining what's going to fall apart here. It's very effective. You got these nice uh, smoke wisps going up here, the debris falling down. Really nice contrast between the two. Uh, and these are, I don't know if these are ever named, these, uh, these mechanical piranhas, the piranhacons maybe. Hot Rod's got his buzzsaw here showing that off for the first and only time, I believe leaving a terrific bubble trail behind him as the piranhas cut in half. More bubbles going up there. Huge, big, oh, they always have their mouths open. We want to see that teeth. Oh yeah, so look at the ripple glass here. See the difference between these two frames? That's what happens when you actually have the physical ripple glass. It's distorted glass that you're putting on top of the uh, cells as they're being shot frame by frame and you're moving that a little bit every frame. So it gives us this ripple feeling. Uh, this here, I love this shot because this is almost abstract shapes. Uh, the distorted refraction underneath the, the surface there is all drawn, of course. It looks like it's kind of like, no, it's just something that's, you know, in, in today's day and age, it'd be automatically done. But this is, this is all drawn on there and it's, it's just these almost abstract shapes. Look at the way they drew the teeth here. Everything and, and the colors are very simple. It's so effective. I love that. Another couple uh, animating uh, mid-grounds here. So the characters, in, in the general point of these is the character gets to stay in place while the, an, the background is the thing that's animating past. Again, this is just a four-drawing cycle here. These are short shots. I think they were afraid of the four-drawing cycles getting too old, but I could, I could watch these for like 10 seconds each. And then we got the reverse angle. Same thing with the four-drawing cycle. Each shape is animated. And you can see here, we're going to go through and we're going to flip. This is eight eight drawings apart, and it's exactly the same drawing. The only thing that's changed is the character positioning. Uh, water effects. So, RC shot a hole inside Unicron here, and we got a bunch of water coming out. We don't know why, but it doesn't matter. Now, this is a cycle going on here, and the uh, water in the foreground is animating straight ahead. We're going to revisit that cycle in a second. So here, we got this terrific overlap with the water and the robots overtaking them. Anytime we can have something in animation interacting with the background, it's going to help us uh, sell it as real because it, it, it's all constructed. You know, in live action film, you get that for free. You have to actually create it intentionally in animation. RC's whirlpooling around here. Great stuff. We have nice scale and depth. Now you see when the water gets closer to the camera, the shapes are simpler. <laughs> Look on screen left here. This is where that the cycle is being exposed because the overlaying animation didn't quite cover it up for a couple frames. NRC right into screen and cut. Last shot, Unicron, Unicron, Unicron. Wonderful stuff. He is just massive. He's big as a planet. Moving on threes. He's so big that twos can't even contain him. Look at the shadow that he's casting here on the, uh, on the planet in front of us, the moon. Uh, now he's moving on twos because he's going so fast. The terrific foreground detail. Now he's moving like this, and here comes the arm coming in. Oh, it's massive. It's so big. Yikes, he's so huge. And we are basically, we're, 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 we're look, run. We're, we're placed so that we're just suffering this devastation firsthand. Impact frame, and then boom, we are just barely out of range of Unicron's hand. The camera shake is all on ones. Boom, 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 boom. We have these skyscrapers coming up here. Now, of course, if we're gonna take it literally, Unicron's hand is like a thousand miles across. So these would not be like buildings. These would be like countries that are being thrown up in the air, but it is, it, it's, all, uh, it's all to sell the illusion. Transformers, uh, the Transformers, the movie. 
uh, love it. Uh, so much there to break down, and it's, uh, it, it's, to me, it's really stood the test of time. Thanks for checking it out, and I'll see you next time. Take care.